Welcome to Average Joe's Gaming Podcast with your hosts, Joe and Tom. Tonight's episode, Review on Borgata. Hi, I'm Joe. And I'm Tom. And today we are going to talk about Borgata. This is our podcast review on Borgata, the deck building families game. Um, so in this game, you are uh, building a crew. You're getting getting uh, stronger stronger cards. Um, the hitmen, the enforcers, the wise guys, the goons. Um, you're getting weapons. You're trying to create uh, or not create uh, control burrows, businesses. Um, the businesses give you uh, respect, uh, money, more cards. Uh, more hand limit. Yeah. Uh, the burrows give you the respect cards, the thugs, the surveillance cards, which can which hurt are, you. Yeah. But amazing. and the surveillance cards, you cannot move up in the books and become uh, higher in the family unless you get rid of those surveillance cards. So uh, the first thing you're going to do is you draw three cards, and that's your starting hand. Uh, then you can do one of the uh, other actions, which is bracketeering. Tom, why don't you go through the rackets? Uh, racketeering, uh, you can run numbers. costs uh, or costs you two muscle, which basically means you need a uh, mafioso worth two strength. Right, and the the and mafiosos they have a, they a, range a muscle from rating one to six. So if you got a couple of hoods, they can do some uh, numbers running, and it'll earn you a thousand dollars. You can hijack. That costs you three muscle. It'll get you two thousand dollars if you're out hijacking. You can loan shark. Now, loan sharking, you have to control a burrow to be able to do it. It costs you five muscle, but it earns you $3,000. And then there's the uh, protection racket, which essentially is probably the top racket that you can indulge in. It costs you five muscle, so you're going to need at least an enforcer or a whole bunch of hoods and thugs or a couple of wise guys. Yep. Uh, It earns you $5,000. Now, you can always overpay for these, but you do not get change back. Right. So if you were going to do run, uh, running numbers or hijacking and you don't control a burrow and you place down a hitman or enforcer that's a five or six, that's fine, but yep. you're not going to get anything back for that other than what you would normally get back for the reward. You're wasting their talents is right. what you're doing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the other thing, and you can do these as many times as you have cards for. So if you want to do running numbers and you have um, three thugs, you can do running numbers three times. Uh you can do money laundering, and money laundering is where you're you're going to pay a thousand dollars to do that money laundering, but you're going to go up in denominations. So if you have three one thousand dollar bills, you're going to go for a three thousand dollar bill. If you want a five thousand, you're going to discard a combination of threes and ones, or you can overpay it with two threes. But you'll never do a money laundering of a three thousand dollar bill for another three thousand dollar bill. It always has to be a larger denomination. So that is something we did wrong the first time we played yes. it. Yes. Okay. Uh and then there's purchasing cards. You want to run them through purchasing cards. Basically the cards you can buy are a hood, a thug, a goon, a wise guy, or a hitman for a mafioso. The enforcer. Oh, and then there's an enforcer. I forgot about him. That's the five version, uh, five number. And these are all. They are. Uh, let's see. You've got your hood for two thousand. You've got your thug for two thousand. It looks like. And one muscle. And a muscle. So in other words, in order to hire a thug, you have to have a, a hood. The hood is the only one you can buy straight up right, cash. Right. The rest, the two through six, are a combination of muscle and uh, cash. Yep. Your goon is two muscle and two thousand dollars. Which so two thousand dollars is bottom line to pay a guy, but sometimes you gotta convince him to join your mob. Um, a wise guy, you need to have some muscle to get him. It's uh, two again and four thousand dollars. Your enforcer costs three muscle and four thousand dollars. Your hitman costs six thousand dollars, and uh, it's three muscle to get the hitman. He's the top guy. And all right, then, and then there's uh, weapons as well. Yep, the weapons uh, run from brass knuckles all the way up to a shotgun, including it's a knife, a bat, and a pistol. Uh, $2,000 for, or is it three? $3,000 for the brass knuckles, five for the knife, seven for the bat, nine for the pistol, and uh, 11 for the shotgun. Now, they have additional muscle that they'll add to a battle. Your brass knuckles are two, your knife is three, your bat is four, your pistol adds five, and your shotgun adds six. So again, you got your weapons ranging from something that you could use just in your fist to something you use in your hands. Okay. 
And then there's combat. Combat you can do at one of the uh, businesses or the boroughs. Uh, the businesses, if you're going to fight there, uh, whoever wins that and controls it for their next turn will get a bonus of money and extra cards they draw. The boroughs, when you control them at the beginning of your next turn, you get respect, you get thugs, and you get surveillance cards. Um, when you when you combat, if it's an unaffiliated mob, which is what you start with the game, you put one to three cards face down. Then you flip up those cards, and then whatever the mafioso is there, you add up your numbers and their numbers, and whoever comes out on top wins the battle. But before you do that, you can always add weapons. And so whoever has the lowest mafioso total decides how many weapons they want to put. You can do one weapon per mafioso. Um, if you're doing the unaffiliated mob, they obviously don't have any weapons, so you can defeat them. And once you defeat the unaffiliated mob, they go into your hand. If someone else were to control it, like uh, Tom in the Lozado family, uh, he would put down his defending mafiosos, or if he already owned it, he might have some uh, mafioso there. Uh, if he has three, then obviously he can't add it to it. If he has less than three, he could add whatever up to three cards there. Uh, then I would decide if, as the attacker, you you decide first if you want to put one to three cards down, face down for mafioso. Once everyone has decided what their mafiosos are going to be, you flip over, you add total. Whoever has the less amount, you can decide whether they're going to put one to three uh, weapon cards, depending on how many mafioso are there. Then the attacker, or whoever the higher number is, would decide whether they're going to put their maf or the weapons on the mafioso. Um, then you flip those over. Whoever has the highest total wins. The winner gets to claim the, the borough or the business. And the loser will take the highest mafioso and put it in their discard pile. The rest of their mafioso and weapon cards go back to the stockpile. And so they really take a hit if they lose that battle. But that's what happens in Mob Wars. Yep. <laughs> uh, the other thing you can do is moving up in the books. You want to explain that? Basically, when you control a borough, you earn respect. With that respect, you can pay, once you've gotten rid of your surveillance, to go up in the books. And essentially that just means moving from a Kujini, which is a cousin, to an associate. That costs you one respect and you're one higher rank in the mafioso. Uh, if the next level, you will also uh, pay one respect, and you go up to be a soldier. Uh, next level, it's two, which uh, two respect, and you must control a borough, and you can become a capo. Third, uh, or the fourth uh, level would be the underboss again, two respect, and you have to control at least one borough. You become a capo. And finally, if you control two boroughs and you've got two respect, you can make yourself into the boss and you will win the game. Okay. And then when you discard the, the respect, it doesn't go in your discard pile. It goes back into the stockpile. Correct. So it, it does take some time to, to get to build up, up respect, that. Yes. Yeah. The other thing about that is, like I said, you have to get rid of your surveillance cards, which are negatives. They cost you usually money. I don't think I've seen one that doesn't cost you money. Sometimes you might have another thing to do with that money. You don't have to get rid of the surveillance. You can't go up in the mob. And if you build up too many of those surveillance cards... Yes, if you have seven surveillance cards in your hand, you get pinched. You lose yep. your, your businesses, your boroughs, and you you basically discard everything in your hand except for the surveillance cards because you cannot discard those. And, uh, yeah, it, it costs you. <laughs> It'll basically take you out of the game, <laughs> yeah. essentially. I mean, you've lost the game if it that could. happens. So. Yeah, but, you know, it's one of those things. You keep those out of your hand and you're yeah. good to go. I think the... Th Second time we played it, I chose not to get rid of surveillance cards the first couple times, and then I realized this isn't good. <laughs> yeah, they, they will stack up. They stack up. Uh, if you choose not to do any of those actions, you can do a recruiting action where you just get a goon for free. That's a three-strength mafioso. Yep. Um, that's about all there is to the game. You At the end of your turn, you discard down to your hand limit, which is seven cards. Unless, unless you, you have businesses. Yep. yep, unless you have a, a, an ability from the businesses that give you of the extended hand limit. Uh, winning the game, there's two different ways to win the game. Uh, Tom had mentioned getting to be boss. You win the game. That is correct. Uh, the other way is to 
control all of the boroughs in the game unless you're playing a five player game in which case you control four out of the five boroughs if you do that that's the other way to win the game so um and they they encourage table talk in the game and i like that i i think that that adds adds to the game so um i really like this game uh i like the theme uh the components are are excellent um, I really like the way they did the, um, you know, your, your what you, your wheel or yeah, yeah, the rondelle or whatever you want to call yes, it. Yes, I, I really like that. Um, I think the the artwork and the lettering is is just fantastic. Um, I love the names. The names really add to the yeah, theme. Yeah, the Lozados, the Catalanos, the Scarzies, the Aconis. The Zambranos, you know, the colors are very thematic. The artwork is 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 top notch. You know, it it just embraces that mafia uh, theme. the The artwork is dark, and it really embraces that. You know, uh, what you see in the movies. You know, yeah. when I when I played this game, I instantly thought of The Godfather yeah, and it's... Goodfellas, and you know those. Yep. And I love Goodfellas. Yeah. <laughs> it's very Goodfellow feeling. Goodfellow so, feeling. It's it, it's got a lot of that feel to it. Yes. Or, um, or I mean, if you want to do TV, The Sopranos. It's got a Sopranos oh, yep. feel to it. So, uh, especially with the businesses, you know, you got wait, you got your garbage business, you got your construction business, you got your uh, meat packing business. Those right now are the three basic businesses. Very thematic. Yes. Because those seem to be not that they are. The businesses that are most associated with that organization. Yeah, and I run a garbage company. Yes, you do. So, and I work in a bank. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I really didn't find anything wrong with the game. The only thing I would say, um, and this is my, my recommendation, is the surveillance cards. I think they could be a little nastier. Um, instead of discarding them into your your discard pile to pay them off. Since they're feds, I would discard them into the stockpile. That you pile. actually have to pay. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, that would be, I guess, a house rule. Yep. Um, I like that aspect. I mean, you discarding them into your into your discard pile, yeah, it hurts you for that hand. Yeah. But essentially, you're not losing anything. Yeah, and especially because if you do get, like in your case, you had two of the businesses. You're drawing oh, yeah. three extra cards. Your hand limit now is nine, I think it was. Let me yep. Look. One hand, one. Yep. It's, it's, oh no, you were. Oh, was, I was at ten. Yours was at ten. Yeah. So basically, you can hold on to ten cards. You start off with a deck of how many to start, depending on how you start. Uh, see, position. yeah, because it's it's a different setup for yeah. each player. But we when we played a two player game, uh, each person started with five hood cards, one thug card, and seven thousand dollars. Okay, so you're so, talking about thirteen cards. Yep. So. If you control the two boroughs, you got almost all your hand. You can you could potentially, or not boroughs, but business. You could potentially have a lot of your cards in your hand. Yeah, and that gives you a lot of control. Oh yeah. So yeah, I mean, I that's the one thing. I, I'm not sure. I can't remember where that point was going. But what were we talking? And when about? we played tonight, this is the first time I've won this game. Is it really? Yes. You killed me too. I killed you. Yeah. I went all mafia on you, yeah. and I took you yeah. downtown. Now, in my defense, I tried to get the construction business back from you because it seemed too powerful that you'd have two of them. Yes, and, and it was. It didn't work out for me. It was not well for you because yeah. I I stocked up on weapons. Yeah, I knew and, you had. Yeah, but, but yeah, you, you, I also had weapons. You got your butt kicked. Got kicked. Yeah. Yeah. Kicked. And you lost your guys, which really hurt you. Yeah, I lost one of my guys. And as soon time. as that happened, then I took my chance because I got. Three extra cards the next turn. I got three thousand dollars extra. I was like, "Well, I might as well just try to take the other two boroughs." And, and it did. worked. You did because those yeah. unaffiliated mafias were there. Now, obviously, in a three, four, and five player game, it will not happen that quickly. No. You, but in a two player game, wow! Yeah, yeah, I I killed you. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's what I guess that'd be my one criticism would be that you. You control the two. It'd be nice if there's more than two business, or three right. businesses. Maybe you can increase that to four. Maybe Again, could in be a, a two-player role. game, you only play with two businesses. Something like that, yeah. Yes. Then you just fight over the businesses a lot before you start to get to the boroughs. Yeah. And you could increase the number of boroughs, too. Right. Why not have the same number oh, of Oh, yeah, you could. You so, can always do house rules on yeah, that stuff. So, But it's but overall, yes. My uh, introduction to gaming, as opposed to like Monopoly or that kind of thing, was essentially a deck builder. It was Dominion. That okay. was one of the first games that was a game that i played 
So I have a soft spot for deck builders, and this itches that soft spot. That's a mixed metaphor, but it it works for me. I enjoy the deck building aspect of it because you can come up with different strategies. You know what cards are out there, and you kind of have an idea what you're going to get. So you can go with different strategies each time you play it. Right. And I enjoy that. Yes, and we've uh, this is this will be the fourth time we played it in the last few days, and uh, really different strategies every time I played it. Uh, this time I, I went heavy on the, the Hitman, and I hit hard and quick, yep. and so I ended the, day, the game quickly. Yeah. Um, the, the first time I played it, uh, I, I kind of took the longer game, and I went after the businesses and not so much the boroughs. I did horribly in it. <laughs> I actually won that one. If I uh, you did. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I played with Eknum and uh, you, yep. Kim, and John Thornton. Yep. Um, and that was the first five playing. And Eknum, yes. Yeah. And Eknum played or won that one. Uh, he actually went uh, very hardcore after the Burrows. After the Burrows yep. yep. And, and we did he, try to and, stop him, man. Yeah, we it tried. Was not. Yeah, it's not well, for lack of trying. In our defense, we sort of played it a little wrong. Right. But um, not because it's a new game. We're learning. But I think if we played it uh, with where you get them in, it would have... It would have killed us. Worse. Yeah, it, it would have killed worse. us even worse. <laughs> so worse, yeah. um, We took the long road on that one. And then this last, uh, we played earlier today. And uh, we played the long road on that one. And we played uh, less aggressive. We built up our hands. We, uh, we bought the weapons... Um, tried to get the the mafioso and it was just a back and forth game with three players and then finally you know Eknum he took me out of the burrows and I was just sitting on a bunch of junk cards and Jesse was sitting over there with one burrow and Eknum had two burrows and all he needed to do was go from underboss to boss and he had the two uh Respect cards, he cashed it in. Either way, he could have yeah. won. And what killed me was I had two cards in my hand. If I had played those two cards, I could have taken one of the burrows oh. back. Yeah. So that was, it was like, but I didn't know what he had because he had a handful of cards. Yeah. And I'm sitting on two cards over here. So regardless if I would have gotten that back, I still would have been sitting on no cards right. for two and, turns. Yeah, and so that's tough because somebody, very tough. somebody's going to pick on If them. you have no cards in your hand, you are just yeah. a sitting duck. Yep. So it's it's a it's a very good game. It's very, very well thought out. Um, it's supposed to hit Kickstarter in early April by Goat Games, designed by Aaron Besmer and Dan Goff. Uh, again, two to five players, 60 to 90 minutes. I think that's very accurate on the time we've played them. Yep. Except for this last game, which is like your last time minutes. where I annihilated you, and yeah, yeah. like fifteen minutes, yeah. or whatever, it was. twenty, something like yeah. that. Yeah, it was quick, but uh, it's a very good game. Uh, I think it scales well. Uh, there's some house rules that you could probably do. Um, like I, we were playing it. Uh, one of the house rules is when you win at one of the boroughs or businesses, uh, you can um, keep your cards there, but face down. Uh, in in the normal play, you play them face up or you leave them face up. Uh, I like face down better because it just adds that little bit of Memory. well, what did I play there? What did I leave yep. there? What you did know, I leave there. What did he? Because if they're face up <laughs> and I got three hoods, well, guess what? You're coming after me next turn. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yep. Um, components are great. Uh, I, I can't wait to see what they they offer with Kickstarter, and uh, I will definitely be backing it probably at the uh, the get my character. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so. that's kind of where I'm thinking about as well. We'll have to see. I don't know what levels they're doing, but I don't know. I've I've never backed at that kind of level before. Yep. I know you did for Goblin, uh, Goblin, Grapple, Goblin Grapple, which still waiting for. Yeah, but I think that's um, coming close, um, and I've never done it before. I thought about upping to, on Goblin Grapple. I just but... did again for a game called Fences. Oh, ah, okay. And uh, that looked pretty cool. That was when I had my... Uh, my full beard and my cowboy hat. See, that's the thing. I got my beard right now. It'd be interesting to see what kind of mafioso they can yeah. make out of me with that. Or I'll end up being a surveillance guy or something like right. that. Right. So. And I think that's where they're doing the, the artwork yeah, on the surveillance. The but uh, that doesn't mean that they might not do them for one of the, like, the pit boss or yeah, the that's Irish true. mob. That's true, I don't yeah. know. All I know is there is that level where they were could, talking about I could be having. The butcher. I could I could see myself as a butcher. <laughs> Even though I don't eat any meat. Yes, uh, butcher yeah. of French fries. Yes, exactly. Yes, I am. That's what that was my name in high school. Weird. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, I mean, is you really like the game. I, do. I really like yeah. the game. I love the game. Uh, Eknum, uh, not a fan of deck builders, loved the game. Yeah, that was, that was Very, what I found the most unusual. Yes. He enjoyed the game. So, um, great game. Yeah. Loved it. Loved the theme of it. Really looking forward to this one coming out. Yep. we be interested to see how it does. So that's it for me. That, I'm Joe. I'm Tom. And good night. Night. Thank you for listening. Please follow us at Facebook. Visit our Average Joe's Gaming podcast page. Or join our Facebook group at Average Joe's Gaming. You may follow us on Instagram, Average Joe's Gaming. Or Twitter, at Hammerly Joseph. You may also join our Board Game Geek Guild at Average Joe's Gaming. You can listen to us on Google Play Music, Amazon TuneIn, iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher. If you'd like to leave us a rating, please do so. Also, if you'd like to drop us a line, you may do so at Average Joe's Gaming Podcast at Outlook.com. Thank you.